Hello, today we'll be talking about everyone's favorite topic in mental health, ADHD. In this video, I'll give you a bird's eye view of this condition and how the symptoms affect one's life. We're not going to be talking about different graphs and different areas of the brain that uh, are affected by this condition, but rather the function. My name is Dr. Ruben Gagarin. I'm your favorite family psychiatrist. So let's dive in. So what is ADHD? ADHD is a developmental condition that affects the development of the brain throughout the lifespan. Therefore, people have symptoms of this condition from very young years and throughout their entire lifespan. Sometimes we cannot identify the symptoms earlier on because it is not very obvious, but usually if you look really carefully, we can see symptoms even at a very younger age or in adults. If you look at the entire population, roughly speaking, about 70% of all of us, we have average attention span. I can imagine that there are maybe 15% of people who have extremely good focus and attention. They usually don't come to psychiatrists for help. I usually see the other 15% that struggle with focus, attention, and uh, hyperactivity. So out of the 15% who potentially meet criteria for ADHD, about half may require medications and another half can get away with learning coping skills and uh, how to manage their life otherwise. So uh, when I do assessment for ADHD, I try to focus so, not so much on the symptoms that are described by DSM. For instance, in DSM there are three forms of this condition. There is hyperactive form, inattentive form, and uh, combined. Combined would be the most common. So I try to focus on how a person functioning. For instance, frequently uh, people who have this condition, they cannot even finish the movie that they want to see. Not even TV show. Within 30 minutes, they quickly lose focus, they get distracted with their phone, and they forget about the movie. Sometimes they walk away and uh, the movie keeps running. Never happened to me, happens to a lot of my patients. Sometimes they uh, only pay attention to the movie when something exciting happening and they don't quite understand what else is going on. I'm going to tell you eight more of these examples. So second would be uh, watching a movie, talking to the friends, playing video games all at the same time. But what it means is that while I'm texting with my friends, again, I'm not paying attention to my video game. Or when I'm playing video game, I may completely forget about texting or responding to my friend. The third example is a conversation with a friend. If someone talks to me for 30 seconds, I can easily pay attention, especially if it's one-to-one, -one, if it's not too noisy. However, people with ADHD, they quickly lose focus. They miss half of what they've been said and uh, their response may not be exactly what the friend is expecting. That may be affecting the uh, relationships. Four would be constantly losing things that are important. For example, not knowing where the cell phone is, losing the car keys. Uh, there is even a book about ADHD that called ADD stole my car keys. So the next one is uh, regretting impulsive decisions. People make decisions and the following day, or maybe within seconds, they regret that they did it. Constantly underperforming. People with ADHD, they make careless mistakes. For instance, they go to school, they write a test, they know the material, so they feel good after the test, but when they receive result, it's just subpar. So they look at the questions and then they realize that maybe they miss a word, or maybe comma was in a different place, so they misunderstood the question, or maybe they read the answers, but they were too long, so they didn't quite understand the answers, and uh, what they thought was the right answer, in fact, wasn't. On the positive side, I see a lot of people with ADHD with a very sparkly personality. So they engage, they make eye contact, they speak fast, very animated. I think this is the way how they compensate for some of the boring parts of the conversation. They keep the, they keep the interaction very exciting that uh, makes it a lot easier for them to pay attention. Interesting. Uh, symptom of ADHD that is not listed in uh, DSM is a quality of boredom that uh, people with this condition experience. For instance, if I feel bored, this is not a big deal for me. 
However, if I had ADHD, it would be a huge deal. People with ADHD, they feel as if they almost dying, as if their brain is shutting down, they are ready to crawl out of their skin. So they do something that kind of wakes them up, that perks them up. And oftentimes this is something that is not a good idea to do. Then again, they regret impulsive decisions. As I mentioned before, uh, as I implied before, if you want to maintain your relationships with your friends, you need to pay attention to them, whether they're exciting or whether they get bored. People with ADHD, they cannot pay attention when it gets boring, so they miss that part. So their friends feel as if they don't care about them. So as a result, people with ADHD frequently lose their friends. In conclusion, if you recognize symptoms of ADHD in yourself and it really bothers you, go to see a doctor. There are solutions to this condition. Unfortunately, we don't have very good medications to make people taller, but we do have uh, treatments that uh, can improve focus, attention, and functioning. There are generally two groups. There is psychotherapy that's called cognitive behavior therapy for ADHD. There is also a group of medications that can help with the focus and attention. In a separate video, you can watch principles of cognitive behavior therapy and principles of medication treatment. Please subscribe and um, leave a comment if you have any questions. I'll do my best to respond. Let me know if there are any other topics that you want to learn about. This concludes this video. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye.